Hi, I'm Neil Hunt. I'm the digital lead at Broadband World Forum, and I'm with uh, Julia, a, a open analyst. Um, so your specialty is uh, technology. Um, obviously, that's a big thrust of this show. You know, there's a lot of talk about different technologies and convergence of technologies. What trends have you seen, and what have you learned from this from the show so far? Sure. So this is an extremely important show for me because it really matches my coverage area, which is access technologies, um, especially fixed access technologies including wireless now moving into fixed wireless access again. The major trend that I've seen is that in past four or five years operators were talking a lot about we will be upgrading our networks now and the whys and now they're talking about how they're going to do that. So they've really gotten into the nitty-gritty of what what they have to do to be able to use the new technologies. So we heard from MBN uh yesterday and, and earlier today about the kind of difficulties that once you kind of prescribe a, an approach and a technological approach and the moment the kind of trucks hit the road, the difficulties that they encounter, how does that, you know, and they talked about a kind of multi-technology approach, what are we seeing and what, what trends are we seeing there? It's extremely important for service providers to have what I call a toolkit where they have upgrade technologies for every possible scenario because even within a country and even a country not as large as Australia you have tremendously different regional issues even neighborhood issues from neighborhood to neighborhood depending upon density take rates what's already been deployed how long has it been in, in that neighborhood so what you see is that it's it's very important to give an, an operator a multitude of tools and that they can pick and choose what fits each area the best given the subscriber base, given the applications, because there's a lot of technology that's now being used for non-residential subscribers, um, and just how to get it done cost efficiently and really paying attention to time to market. And then I suppose, you know, one of the other, one of the other uh, conversations is about how close you can get uh, fiber uh, to people. Right. You know, is fiber fundamentally the underlying technology that, that's going to drive super fast broadband? And I guess secondly, um, you know, what is fiber the technology that will then future-proof your networks against the, the demands of the future? We are already using fiber for broadband technologies. It's always a question of how deep is that fiber? How close is the fiber to the home, the apartment building, the office, the university, the hospital. So you hear a lot about fiber to the logical point, deeper, fiber deeper, every group has a different term for it, but mo even wireless data spends most of its life on a fiber-based network. So we have a tremendous amount of fiber deployed in the world in the communication networks um, for mobile back haul, mobile front haul, I almost run, or really depend on fiber. So yes, it, fiber is the future. It, it's already here today. It's really a question of how far. So for example, in China, it's, it's all about fiber to the home. Even China Mobile has a tremendous fiber to the home network under de being deployed today. In other parts of the world, fiber is extremely expensive to deploy. So it really depends on how much competition there is and are there more cost-effective approaches so that you don't have to pull fiber all the way into a, a, a housing unit or an apartment unit. But um, fiber will protect us in the sense of it can handle a tremendous amount of growth and that's part of what we're seeing in today's show is that we've already 10G, so upgrades to 10G, fiber to the home technologies are underway. It's not saying that you need 10G in your home. What it's saying is that you've got to upgrade the network so that you can support more subscribers on 10G than let's say you could on 2.5 or 1 gig. Mm. And you can also support non-residential subscribers, which is very important for faster payback. So if you give us a, I mean, a, you know, a, a rough, and I, I know geog geographical factors play a lot of, a, a lot of issue in, in this, a big part in this, but where do you see the technology landscape moving to? Oh, well, we're definitely moving to fiber deeper. You know, so if you look at GFAST G or G.FAST, it's moving fiber all the way to distribution point, which has to be quite close uh, to the, the housing unit, if not in the basement of, the, uh, of, let's say, an MDU unit. If you look at uh, fiber to the home, it's all the way to the home. If you look at uh, 
VDSL2 vectoring or super vectoring 35B, the fiber is all is at least to the cabinet, if not not even closer to the housing complex. So the fiber is already there. You know, so when we talk about fiber to the home, it's a very specific technology because the fiber is literally pulled into the home. But there's a lot of different in-between steps before you decide, before an operator decides that that makes the most sense. And it has to make the most sense economically. And so I don't like to get into a religious, you know, it doesn't have to be fiber to the home, but it's all about supporting higher bandwidth applications and a wide range of subscribers and really enabling fixed mobile convergence, which means that those mobile networks can use the fi same fiber network for backhaul and front home. Brilliant. Julie, thank you very much. Thank you time. very much.